Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Mercenary Kings Reloaded Edition. This is a sort of re-release of Mercenary Kings, which is a 2D metal slug combined with Monster Hunter style game. I know that sounds a bit weird, but you'll understand once we actually get into it. I actually bought this game way back when it originally came out on the PS4, I believe. I might be misremembering that. And I remember absolutely hating it. So, they didn't have the best chances coming in, but, well, we'll get into that shortly. And by the way, before anyone asks in the comments, because I guarantee this will be asked, they have put out a patch to fix the elevator glitch. I have been and tested it myself, the elevators work again. So, not that much is seen in the options menu, so let's just hop straight into the game, shall we? I've been playing for about three hours at this point, and I'm onto the third tier of missions. There is a bunch of tiers of missions, so you will probably have plenty to keep yourself occupied if you enjoy the gameplay. Whether or not you will enjoy the gameplay, well, you're about to find out. God knows how long this video is going to be, but hopefully by the end of it, you'll have determined whether or not this game is the game for you. So, the game's loading times aren't actually that great, but the decent thing is that you'll be spending at least 5-10 to 10 minutes in every particular area without loading times. So, it's... Okay, I suppose. Nothing really wrong with it. So, this is our hub, and we can wander around and talk to people, and they'll have things for us. Like this guy here, who has all of the enemies in the game for us, and there doesn't appear to be that many. I mean, there's a fair few, don't get me wrong, but you start seeing the same ones over and over again, and it starts to get annoying. Everyone also has something you can talk to them about, but annoyingly enough, you have to wait for this scrolling thing to finish. And you have to do that with every single line of text. And I couldn't be bothered to go and look at them because this scrolls too damn slow. So I, yeah, I just don't really see the point. You can talk to these guys to make yourself a banner and a ornament for your area, just in case you try and play the online play. FYI, I did try that, which is actually up here, by the way. I have tried it three times, and all three times it just did not work properly. I wasn't able to do anything else other than wander around in the hub, because either we just immediately get disconnected, or we'd go into an infinite loop on the load screen. I don't know if this was a problem with me, because my internet's been kind of shit lately, but just FYI, I wouldn't just picking this up for the multiplayer, based on my word alone. So, here are the more interesting things that you can do. You can come down here and talk to the Cybermods lady, and you can use any materials you've picked up to build Cybermods. But these cyber mods will often have effects and also bad effects. But thankfully, parachute doesn't. So I'm going to buy parachute and install it immediately. A paratrooper, I should say, install it immediately. The effects can be anything from giving you more money or more stuff to uh, let's have a look. See, uh, sprinter, speed up, but defense down. Yeah, you get the general idea. Pretty simple stuff. Now you can come to this lady. And buy supplies and materials. Supplies are pretty obvious. They're, they're equipable items. You can carry two of them with you at a time. And you can also find them out in the field. You've got rations, adrenaline shots, which will get yourself back up. Hand grenades and shock bombs. Shock bombs are meant for specific missions where you need to capture dudes. A riot shield, a C4 to blow things up, and a first aid to heal you completely. I see no reason to take along a first aid, because you can just take along rations, and they work the same way anyway. You can also come here to buy certain kinds of materials, but... Nothing particularly out of the ordinary. We talk to this lady, and we can upgrade our armor, which is basically just giving us extra health. And we can also change our weapon. Now, strangely enough, weapons in this game are very heavily customizable. So if we go take a look, you can see that we've got a bunch of different things going on here. So you've got all your stats over on the right there, and you can also see what kind of weapon you'll make when you equip a different kind of weapon or different kind of part to it in pretty much any time. So, if I change my receiver from the Bolt 6 shooter to the thing I just built, which was the Freedom Fighter, it'll turn my gun into a... I just need to walk away from these guys. It'll turn my gun into a one-shot weapon, apparently. All right. So, let's, cause, let's give it a magazine, actually. If we give it a magazine, it should get a lot more than one bloody bullet. Right. Uh, you can also see... Uh, different elemental effects on the left there, and I which one of these will be... Alright, we'll just, we'll just buy the artillery jagger and equip that. So if we get away and we start firing, we now have a free shooter weapon. So let's... Ooh. 
Oh, there's... Why did that get set to slot 4? Right, let's go back and equip my gun that I had available previously, although I think I need to put something back onto it. Uh, ammunition, I mean, is there, but yeah, you get the general idea. You can get all sorts of different kinds of weapon parts and equip them to the gun as you see fit to change the range, the speed, the reload speed, the amount of bullets in the mag. You get the general idea. It's a very basic weapon equip system. And honestly, I'm not... I mean, I don't think it's that bad. I just find it a bit uninteresting in the long, in the long run because there doesn't seem to be any really ridiculous parts that can add some really cool effects to your guns. I mean, like, sure, you can get shotguns and you can get sniper rifles and stuff like that, but it just doesn't seem to have any of the really ridiculous stuff. And that's just kind of unfortunate. I mean, you've even got something like the bloody trombone, but that's just a shotgun. Yeah, confuse your opponent as you blast them away with this weirdly shaped shotgun. But yeah, you get the general idea. I've just been sticking to my six shooter because it's nice and powerful for me. And it does a fair amount of damage. So there you go. Now that we've done that, we've got a few things we can do. We can talk to this guy here and get today's special, which will give us some extra abilities and some extra health, which is nice, but it only lasts for one mission. So this is what I meant when I said that this was Monster Hunter style. It's generally the same sort of gameplay cycle. You go and do a mission, you come back with all the materials that you got, you upgrade your stuff and you go back out. So that's basically what I mean. And there's also kind of an apt comparison considering that Monster Hunter World came out the same week this did, which means it didn't really stand a chance. Uh, so here we have a look at all our missions. I've got three tiers unlocked, as I said at the beginning of the video. There's a fair few more you can unlock. The general idea is that you go through and you do as many of these as you please, and once you do, you unlock the next few missions. Rinse and repeat ad infinitum. You've got a few different things you can do, like this one here is to destroy a fuel tank, this one here is to find a research report, and there's probably one around here. Rescue eight hostages, which you can shoot, which is why I haven't tried that one. Find a suitcase, destroy his, um, the thing. Kill 20 sentry guns or kill 8 abductors. I think the 8 abductors, not to mention the riot griffs and the 12 hostages are more interesting. So, let's give this mission a go, shall we? And then we can come talk to the guy here to leave. You can also head out to the right here in order to, um... In order to go out and get some resources. But as soon as you talk to this guy, more or less, it'll load you into the mission. Obviously, you just wait there if someone else is going around and doing stuff in camp. And this is the screen that would just load forever if I was playing in multiplayer. Not entirely sure why that was a thing. Maybe it was just bad luck on my part whenever I decided to put the online multiplayer on. But, yeah. If you want an opinion on how that works on Vita, ask someone else. I really can't give you any real information except the few times I did try, it didn't work. Remember what I said about the loading times? I wasn't kidding. Alright, here we go. Thankfully we shouldn't have any more loading times past the next few minutes. So, it looks like we have a pretty full up map. So you hit select and you can see your proficiencies, which is weird. It's weird that you can only see these like in this menu. But yeah, craft 10 magnum parts to unlock a special permanent ability. There's all your stuff in your inventory. There's your mi uh, mission info. You can hit start to see your trophies and pause the game. I have a few trophies, but not many. I won't bother looking through all of them. Here's some more options, by the way. Double tap to roll, which is actually okay, but I haven't got it turned on. Which is a nice little ability, because rolling does actually help you avoid bullets. And quick item select, which actually swaps what is your movement and what is your uh, ability to swap items. So if I use the analog stick here, I can change between my C4 and my ration. Notably, I tried playing this on the analog stick, but it didn't work very well. Mainly because, well, considering this game, this game is basically Metal Slug, where you want really precise control over what direction you're pointing in, so it's probably a good idea to play on the D-pad, just so you know when you're aiming right and when you're aiming upwards, because that did cause me one or two problems very, um, that did cause me one or two problems very quickly, so... We're just going to go and have a little bit of a wander around and see if we can find these dudes that we 
need to save for the extra objectives. There is also one secret objective in every level, which is something they don't actually tell you about until you've done it. And generally it's something that you can find out just by wandering around. Like, for example, the mission that got everybody stuck because it was a mission that had lots of elevators and therefore was glitched. It was a level with a lot of elevators and a lot of ways to play through the game. A lot of ways to play through the mission. So you could go for the really quick escape and get the mission done in like two minutes. But if you went all the way around, it would give you a secret objective for doing it. Secret objectives, however, actually don't get you that much money and that's all they get you. They just get you a little bit of extra cash, which is not particularly great in my point of view, just because I'd like to see some more unique rewards for actually putting in the effort to going around and finding all the hidden objectives. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that. But other than that, general gameplay is literally just go around and blast dudes. You have your main weapon, which is applied to the square button. And your main weapon can have levels of accuracy, which will make it less accurate and therefore spread out like in a bullet cone. You can have different amounts of damage and different kinds of damage and elemental and piercing and stuff like that. Nothing particularly out of the ordinary. You reload using the R button and it actually has the Gears of War reload system, which is actually a neat way of going about things because they actually give you a little bit of a power boost if you reload at the right time, which is actually pretty neat because, well me, since I'm on a six-shooter revolver, having all my bullets be 10% more powerful is actually a really good buff for me. At least it gives you a time to... At least it gives you a reason to actually time your reloads properly and and focus on the fact that you are reloading. There are a lot of games like this that don't have you focus on your reloads. It's not too bad though, so... Yeah, we've got... Hmm. So this is the regular old-fashioned hostage? Thank you. Yep. Okay, there's a crate with a ration in it. That's actually kind of nice. Respawning enemies! That's fun. Right, um... Right, okay, I have to go down there to kill the dude there, so... Let's find our way out of this building immediately, which shouldn't be too far down this way. So yeah, uh, other controls that you have. The L button will let you do communications with your teammates if you have them. Triangle button is your melee attack, but it's not very good. I'd recommend staying outside of melee range pretty much all times. And it's also the way you, like, cut people out of things. Circle is your dodge. X is your jump. And, as you saw already, analog stick lets you swap between your different items. Which is perfectly reasonable. Oh, my secret mission is apparently fine for leather. What an odd secret mission. Uh, right, I have to take the other door out of there, don't I? Yeah, I have to go back up and take that other door to find those dudes. Respawning enemies, damn it. Enemies can drop materials, you just pick that up with the down button, and you do also have the ability to use your transceiver, which is a on the down on the D-pad all the time. Since you can only carry around two different kinds of items, you'll often need to go and get something else for your mission. So you need to use your transceiver. Your transceiver has limited battery power though, so you do need to be a little bit worried about that, just because you don't want to go calling in too many resources. But yeah, otherwise, the basic gameplay is this. It's just jump and shoot. Jump and shoot, jump and shoot, jump and shoot. It's Mega Man. It's... It's... Yeah, it's Mega Man. It's what's it called? Um, brain work with me here. It's Mega Man. It's uh, Metal Slug. In fact, it's a lot more Metal Slug than it is Mega Man just because of the bloody graphical style. I mean, like, this could easily be a sort of... What's the word I'm looking for? A lower budget Neo Geo game? This could easily be one of those. Nevertheless... I really do like the graphics on this one. They run relatively well. There are slowdowns here and there, but I haven't really had any come along in the middle of a really important fight or anything like that. You really want the analog stick to be nice. You really want the D-pad to be nice and precise when you're in a situation like that. But yeah, you... I do like the graphics. They look a lot like a low-rent Neo Geo game, and that's a good thing. I don't say low-rent in a bad way. I mean, they, it looks like they've done it with, like, half the budget, which is pretty nice. And there are some really cool effects going on, too. Like, that fire looks pretty damn good. 
the soldiers' heads coming off if you get a headshot on them as the last shot. And even just the blood that flies out of them, even when you don't headshot them, it looks really nice. They've done a fantastic job with all of the... Well, this looks bad. Just trying not to get this um, hostage killed and trying not to die myself in the process. Never particularly easy for me, is it? Right, I need to uh, use a couple of rations. There we go. That's a that's a dirty trick. And if I shoot the hostage, he um he will die, and I will fail that mission objective, which is something I don't want to do. Okay, I actually managed to pull it off without killing one of the hostages. Who would have thought? Right, uh, we gotta go up. Gotta go up and look in the other doors. But yeah, looks great. Great animation, and decent enough art for what it is. The soundtrack and the sound design just in general, though, isn't particularly to my style. I don't think it looks particularly amazing. Duck. Yeah, I don't think it looks... Um, it sounds particularly amazing, but... It does the job. I'm not particularly annoyed by it or anything like that. It's fine. The one thing I am kind of concerned about, though, is the gameplay itself. Now, this whole cycle of finding dudes to shoot and then shooting them in particularly low-difficulty combat is generally what you do at first. Like, the game starts out being somewhat difficult, but then once you start to get good at it, it just becomes a little bit of a chore, especially since most of the enemies you fight are, well, not so much the same, but they kind of act in the same way. Either they'll shield themselves from harm and then open up to take a shot at you, or they'll just shoot at you pretty much all the time, or even, even not take a shot at you sometimes. Like those little saw blades that run along the floor, those things will not shoot at you, obviously, but they all start to feel relatively the same after a while, which kind of sucks, honestly, just because I... I think that with a little bit more enemy variety, this game could be fantastic. However, since you have to deal with a lot of the same dudes over and over again, it makes the game feel a bit monotonous after a while. Just because when you go on the missions, you end up running into the same dudes, and they've always got the same guns and the same... the same general objectives. It's either go kill them or find something that they're guarding, so you have to fight them one way or another. And generally, you want to be fighting them just so that you've got all of the resources that you can get, you know? Which is kind of annoying just because having to kill all these dudes to hope that they drop a bloody rare power-up or a rare, um, a rare piece of material just means that you want to kill everyone that you've come across. But at the same time, you don't want to because they're all really boring to fight after a little while. This is the infirmary. You can see that my health is going back up slowly while I'm here, so I can just wait here. Dying in this game isn't of much consequence. It is a lot like Monster Hunter. You'll lose a few of your rewards, and by rewards I mean money. You'll lose a bit of your money every time you die, and if you die three times, that's it. You've failed the mission, and you have to... You have to go back. Should I, should I splice Donald Trump? No, I shouldn't. So... Generally, it just doesn't really feel like you're in that much danger after a while, especially once you get a good weapon going, because you just... Basically, you just start to absolutely rip through everything. There are bosses in this game, but they don't come up very often at all. And when they do, they're, they're even easier. Because they follow really set patterns. Like, stupidly set patterns. To the point where you could just walk in and almost beat the boss with your eyes closed based on the bloody sound they're giving off. Just because of how, just because of how monotonous their patterns are. And it just doesn't work in the long run. I mean, the reason why Metal Slug didn't get too monotonous with its enemy types was because it always had unique ways to use them. And it made it so that... It made it so that you'd never st stuck around one area for too long. In this game, you can end up visiting the same map several times, and the enemies will often be in the same spot. Sometimes they'll rejigger the positions of the enemies in order to make things a little bit more interesting by having them actually guard something or other. But other than that, it just... 
it just feels repetitive after a while because you end up going through the same areas and you come to expect the same layout of dudes and you end up just going into a state where you'll just end up shooting them via muscle memory and honestly it's not that challenging. I would have liked to have seen the game take a little bit more interest with its enemy placements. Not to mention the game really is a fair bit too easy, especially once you've learned all of these dudes' patterns. It's just... You take a lot of damage when you take a hit, so you can only last for a few hits at a time. But outside of that, you don't really have that much issue just going around and blowing the crap out of everybody. So... It's just... Yeah, see? Look, elevators actually work this time. Oh, and there goes... There goes my hostage, so there goes the mission objective. I really don't understand how you're supposed to um, pull off that mission other than as soon as you get down, just fire bullets and hope you succeed because they're just... They, they seem to kill that guy immediately without any sort of warning. And now I have to wait for both of them to come back down. God damn it. This is why I hate elevators in two-dimensional games. I, I don't really have that big of a problem with Mercenary King's game. Why was I not able to shoot him? That was weird. My bullets just went right through him. But yeah, uh, again? What? What what the fuck? Okay. Not gonna claim to know why that happened. That should not have happened, but... Oh well. The gameplay isn't that bad. I just find myself getting a bit bored with it because it's just so... So simple. Oh, maybe I do have enough hostages to let one die. Which is a horrible thing to say. Uh, right, I have to go back down and go into the door that's down there to... What? Why in the hell can I not shoot that guy? That was weird. There's another bug for you, um, Tribute Games. <laughs> Other than the multiplayer but not liking working and the frame rate dropping a bit, the port seems okay. There was that elevator glitch which I talked about in a video on this channel personally. But other than that, it seems to be okay for the most part. I don't have a I don't have any major gripes about the port. It's a shame they didn't take the opportunity to put in more special mission types. Like, you know how in uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker they give you the absolutely ridiculous kinds of missions? I'd love to see more of them in a game like this, because you it would add some much needed variety in this sort of game, but... Oh well, we got what we got. Right, my objective is on the roof there, but we might actually be able to kill the abductor in here without getting the hostage killed, and that might be good. Ooh. They love taking their shots before all the screens even faded in, don't they? Oh, and I shot the hostage. That's the mission objective failed, I believe. No! Okay, I'm, t I'm guessing that we've got two obje um, objectives. We've got two hostages up on this roof. Let's go have a look. Yeah, rescue 12 hostages failed. Oh well. Uh, we'll go and we'll fight a boss and then we'll uh, finish this video off because it's been 24 minutes. But that mission there, other than being longer than your traditional Mercenary Kings mission, is a pretty good representation of how the game plays. It's a relatively basic platformer shooter with some equipment elements going on in the background. And it's okay. Like... Other than the gameplay being a bit dull after you've figured out the majority of the enemies that you've... that you're going and fighting... It's... It's okay. I got nothing particularly wrong with it, and if you could get it to work with your maze, because I believe this does actually have ad hoc capabilities, and if they've screwed up the ad hoc, I'd be a little bit disappointed. <laughs> but yeah. 
There is a little bit of a story going on, but it's basically meaningless. You know, you do have, um... Ad hoc. Yeah, told ya. Alright. That's actually... That's actually good. It'd be nice if you could... Imagine if you get four people together to play bloody Mercenary Kings on a bloody Vita. Who would have thought? Uh, I believe X-File... No, not that one. It's... Yeah. This is the mission I want to go on. And I want to go and get some health kits for this one, because this is actually a boss fight. Uh, no, we won't worry about any upgrades or anything like that. Uh, supply... Buy... Supplies... We'll grab some first aids. We don't need anything else on... Oh. Right, can't put it in my, um... Backpack, because I need to... Clear some shit out of my backpack. Uh, deposit the C4, deposit the ration, and put the first aids in there. Now we buy... Rations. There we go. Uh, missions, Corporal, you know, Baron's War Room, and away we go. It's really not that bad, I just, as I said, the whole Metal Slug part of the gameplay just gets a bit old when you have to deal with the same enemies over and over again. Those abductors weren't even any different from the shielded enemies that I fought in the same mission. It's basically the same thing, except you can't shoot the shield or you'll fail a bonus objective, which is... Not the worst thing in the world, but at the same time, you know, some people feel bad about shooting the hostages. I don't really mind, because apparently I don't care for some non-existent pixels. Let it load up, let it load up, let it load up. Alright, away we go. This is a very similar map, actually. At least they make some good use out of the maps that they've got. At the same time, though, I'm just not that big of a fan of it, mainly because it means that there isn't that much in the way of interest after you've been through an area the first three times or so. So there's a silly enemy for you. I don't know why there's more. there aren't more of these bloody weird snail-style enemies going on. Lilo, get close again and just blow his face off before he can do any real damage to me. That works a treat. Stab this. I don't even need to worry about stabbing it, really. I've got all the ammo in the world. Now, if I remember correctly, it's at the end of the street. Yeah, I've got to get the, that door there. Yeah. And we will move on and fight a boss. Really not doing well with the reloads here, I gotta say. Ow. Damn respawning enemies. Okay, now if I remember correctly, we're just heading to the command center and kill a couple of dudes, because of course we always need to kill a couple of dudes before the boss. See that guy's head come off? That's, that is some amazing animation work right there. Uh, just take a ration real quick so I don't die immediately. And up we go into the boss room. You can tell when a boss is coming because those little grey things will be there. So yeah, this is a boss. They're huge and they have the same set of attacks. Pretty much over and over again. More or less, anyway. General idea is to find the hole in their pattern so that you can live through it. Oh, 
that's a transceiver I'm gonna destroy up there, but thankfully they're actually kind of nice about it and let me fight and take out the giant puppy dog, which is a nice little thing if you're a little bit bored of fighting the same enemies over and over again, but he's already started to repeat his attacks and his set of attacks wasn't really that difficult to worry about anyway, considering the amount of Considering the amount of things you get to, amount of like med kits and stuff you get to work with anyway, they aren't really that much of a danger. See, that's pretty much it. I'm sorry if you have epilepsy because Jesus wept. And that's that. That was a quick look at Mercenary Kings. It's not too bad, but it's pretty damn repetitive, and I find myself getting quite bored by it. I guess if I guess if you're one of those sorts of people that doesn't mind general repetitiveness in a game, this would be the thing for you to go pick up. Ooh, that was an item there. A puzzle, apparently. Apparently, I've unlocked. Apparently, I've unlocked new missions. I didn't realize that was possible, but yeah, the. The overall quality of the game is pretty good. I mean, I'd like to see the multiplayer be a little bit more... Either A, more populated, or B, more stable. And I would like to see some more wackier stuff, and maybe that is something that happens later on in the game, but... Personally, I'm just a little bit bored, and I'm going to move on to other things, and I'm basically, I kind of have to move on to other things, because I've got five other videos to do this week, Jesus Christ. But, that's pretty much it. Would I recommend it? Personally... Not really, maybe on sale. So that you don't feel bad about just putting it down without finishing it if you get bored by the repetitiveness, but... That's just me. Thankfully I got it for free because I bought the bloody PS4 version ages ago. So yeah, this has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.